God's grace, his mercy, and his peace with you today through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, let's take a look at the spirit of fear versus the spirit of courage. Which one of those do you think is experienced by most people in the world today? All right, which one do you think is experienced most by Christians today? Which one do you experience the most today? And which one would you like to experience the most? Well, today, let's take a look at the spirit of fear versus the spirit of courage and see what God would teach us about that today by his word, the scriptures, as we Christians march through this world forward to victory, to the end of this world, to the return of our king, and to the prize that awaits us at the end of it. What does God say to us today about fear and courage? Well, first of all, let's just define those terms according to, let's just use Webster's Dictionary. Webster defines fear like this. It says, Fear is an unpleasant and often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. All right, so that's fear. Courage, they say, is a mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, or withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. So what do we note about fear and courage here is that it's not about your outward circumstances because both fear and courage, both of them occur when danger is present and action is needed, okay? So it's not outward. The difference is the stance of the heart in response to what is outward in circumstance, how you react to it, your angle of your heart and stance in response to the danger. You know, fear weakens you, makes you retreat, want to run and hide, sort of like a hermit crab, hide back into the shell. Whereas courage makes you go forward, brandish your sword, and run at the danger for victory. So a great example of that, I think, is, of course, David and the army of Israel in their each responses to the outward circumstance of the giant Goliath when they saw him. Because we read here in 1 Samuel 17, there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. In other words, they say nine and a half feet tall and armed to the teeth. And we read, the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And we read in verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So what's their response to the outward circumstance of Goliath. Fear, which made them want to do what? It weakened them, made them want to run and hide and climb into their shell and escape. All right? That was their response. But when David saw the same giant on the field, he said to the men who stood by him, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. And then he went to the king and said, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. What's that? Courage. You know, it empowered him. He had great might on account of his stance in his heart toward the outward giant of Goliath. And what happened is we read in Verse 28, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And so what do we see there? Courage makes you mighty. Courage gives you strength and power. 
And courage makes you run forward for the win, for the victory. You run at your danger. Fear makes you run away. Cower, hide like a coward. Courage makes you brave. So what's the difference between these two again, fear and courage? It's not the outward thing that is the danger. It's the stance of your heart in your response to that danger. It's really the eyes of faith versus the eyes of the flesh. Think about it. King Saul and the army of, the, of Israel were afraid because they were looking at this giant with the eyes of the flesh. He's a champion, they say. He's unstoppable, armed to the teeth, means to kill us. That's the flesh. The flesh is always going to make you afraid. It's the old Adam in us. But the eyes of faith looks at that same outward danger and says, that is a giant whose protection has been removed. He's bred for me, and God will give me the win. I run forward for victory because he sees this is just an uncircumcised Philistine. God's going to deal quickly with him. So it's about perception. How your heart sees the danger. Are you looking at it with the eyes of the flesh? Your fear. Or the eyes of faith? Courage will rise within you. It's always the way it's going to work. And we also notice here that uh, you know, there's a difference between earthly courage and divine courage. You know, any unbeliever in war could act with courage in a situation looking with the eyes of flesh, perhaps. They assess the battlefield and think, yeah, maybe I can go, maybe I can't. I might win, maybe I won't. And they can still go and do that. But that's earthly courage based on the eyes of the flesh assessing the battlefield. Maybe you win, maybe you won't. But the eyes of divine courage are different. They see that God is on that battlefield. God is the one who's fighting the battle. And God will give me the victory. And you have 100% confidence you'll go forward for the win. That's the courage God wants inside each of you to turn you into David. Now, I wrote this definition for courage. <clears throat> it's faith on the warpath for the cause of the truth and to defend the right for the glory of God. You like that one? You know, courage really is nothing other than this. Faith in God, taking action, that God will give me the win and the victory, and therefore to run at the danger with power. You also notice that fear uh, always makes you weak, doesn't it? When you feel fear, you're going to lose strength. You'll be weak as water. But when you have courage in your heart, filling, then you're mighty as a rock. We also notice here that courage is the one virtue, think about this, that leads in all the other virtues. If you don't have courage, Every other Christian virtue you have is useless. You can have love, you can have charity, gentleness, humility, kindness, desire to help, but if there's no courage, you never get onto the battlefield. When danger comes, you run away, cower, and hide, and all the other virtues are useless. Courage is the one virtue needed most, because by it you run at the battlefield, onto it for the win, and all the other virtues follow courage and are put to use in your great arsenal as a Christian. So we need courage above all else as Christians. Also we notice here that uh, courage really is exhilarating, isn't it? Everybody, if you look at them on the battlefield here, uh, the only person that was really alive was David. Army of Israel, it's like there was a cloud, a fog, a mist hanging over their eyes. It was a terrible day. But David alone stood there, as it were, with the sun shining and with blue skies. He thought it was a great day. Because that's what courage will do inside of your heart. It's always a great day. It's marvelous. And uh, uh, divine courage also, we notice, is defiant. Say that word with me, defiant. defiant. 
you know, the giant shouted at David. But what did David do? He defied Goliath and shouted back at him, No, God will give you into my hand this day, and I'll get the victory. You know, Christian courage, which God wants all of us to have, think about this, is always defiant against evil. You fight. Think about Daniel. They said to him, you can't pray to any other God for 30 days. Daniel was defiant against the king's order. I pray anyway. It's defiance. It's glorious. It's marvelous. You think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were told, you must bow down to this golden image. And they were defiant against that order and said, we obey God. We will not bow. Peter and John were told, you can't preach anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. They said, we must obey God rather than men. That's Christian defiance. It's courage. Paul, likewise, uh, said the same. And Jesus was defiant, gloriously, against the devil, the prince of this world, saying, I will cast you out, and the time of your defeat has come. So notice, say it again with me, royal defiance. defiance. That's what courage is all about as a Christian to defy evil forces that would withstand you. That's a great thing. It's also, we notice, courage is admired by men. When David won the victory with courage, everybody admired him. They cheered and entered into the fray. And the women sang songs. Kill, Saul killed thousands, but David his ten thousands. It brings great respect. No one, frankly, admires a coward, but everybody respects a man of courage. And guess what? God and the angels love it too. Boy, God absolutely loves courage in his people. He said to Joshua, be strong, Joshua, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Isn't that great? Isn't that marvelous? It's the hallmark of God's people through the scriptures. You know, God is not pleased with cowards or fear. Uh, He uh, does not take pleasure in those who shrink away, says Hebrews. But of those who run forward to the battle line to take the kingdom, it's glorious. uh, Proverbs 28 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So God wants to make you into David today and every day, and to fill you with divine courage, defiant, glorious, and again I'll say it, courage is faith on the warpath, and courage is great. Do you have it? Well, do you think this is an important thing for us to have these days? Well, if you look around at the world and the times in which we're living, I think courage is going to be one of the things we need the most in the days to come. And today. Why? Because there is a spirit of fear ranging the countryside of the earth today. Uh, Giants, Goliaths, who are warring against the Christians. What kinds of things uh, are inspiring people with fear these days? Well, you've got, uh, of course, this COVID-19. It's being preached day and night on the news. What do they say? Death, 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 death. Fear, 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 fear. And people are gripped with fear on account of it. You've got the governments of the world inspiring fear by the way they're acting. This was just sent to me last night by one of our members, our friends. And uh, listen to this headline in Canada, okay? Coronavirus crackdown. Judge orders Canadian church locked to prevent Sunday Worship services. That was in Ontario, Canada. Locking churches to keep Christians out. And the governments and the governors, some of them of the world, are attacking Christianity to cause you to fear. Will you be afraid or brave? We also have the uh, giant of the billionaire bullies, if I can call them that, with their evil agendas. 
And I'll tell you, they're only getting their works, are just starting to get uh, going. They're afoot, but they're not yet in full bloom. Will you be brave against them? People are fearing the future these days, what's coming on the world, fearing other people, and fearing death. Death, 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 death. Preached all day long, death, 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 death. <laughs> be afraid of it, death. Are we so afraid of death? These days there's a spirit gripping the world. You know, I was walking across a park not too long ago, like a hundred yards from a basketball court where mom was, two moms were playing with their two little toddlers and these little tiny children were so afraid of me not wearing a mask like a hundred yards away in fresh air. They're like, mommy. And the mommies had to say, it's okay. He's at a distance. What is going on with the children? They're being taught a spirit of fear about the whole world. And that's not just for children. You've seen adults, right? Have you seen this driving down like Courtney, Courtney Parkway where you see someone in a car with the windows rolled up wearing a mask and a face shield? That's like fair gone rampant. What? The windows up in a car is not enough to protect you? That is fear gone wild. And even a lot of Christians have been hiding out like hermit crabs in their shell, afraid to come out to church to hear the word of God preached as if somehow that will kill them. You know, there's a spirit of fear. There's a Goliath. There are Goliaths, giants, at loose, at large, in the world today, roaming the country side, countryside, defying Christians and shouting at you. What kind of a spirit and stance of heart will you have in response to them? Fear or courage? Now, where does all this come from? Well, you could say, for one, the media. You know, the news agencies. For day and night, night and day, what do you hear? Death tolls, fear, 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 fear. And in fact, if you saw the Project Veritas uh, leaked video of their undercover operation at CNN, did you see that? Where they caught on tape the CNN technical director, Charlie Chester, saying openly that the most, most trusted name in news was just making up stories. They, he said that. They were just making up stories for their propaganda. And they were told to push death tolls, push it, push it, push it. And he said, because, quote, fear sells. They're trying to manipulate you. They're trying to shout at the ranks of God's army to make you afraid to get power. And he's even said that after they're done with COVID, when everybody's tired of hearing about that one, they're planning on moving on to climate change, like Chicken Little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, to put the rest of the world into fear again. You're going to let them do that to you? So the media, and then you have the world powers, like I said, governments, billionaire, billionaire bullies, the demons, evil spirits, and the devil. They all work with the weapon of fear, just like Goliath, to cause people to cower. Will you stand up and fight, even to death, against these brutes and windbags? I'll say it again, brutes and windbags. They're just full of air. Frankly, if you look with the eyes, that is, of faith. Will their shoutings make you afraid? No way. Listen to this from Scripture. God says to this, listen very carefully to us. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. In other words, courage. If you have a spirit of fear today, at least you can know this, it ain't from the Lord. All right? God didn't give it to you. Other people will. Your mortal flesh, our old Adam, tends to fear things, but not your new divine nature, not the royal nature of Christ in you. God gives you a spirit of courage. And the wonderful news I have for you today is it's rising up everywhere in the ranks of God's army. Christians, think about this. Will you be a part of this great movement? In Canada, where a lot of these things seem to be happening, where the government sent police to break up a church that was having a Christian Passover service. Did you see this? The pastor 
shouts at the police, out, out, you Nazis, out, come back with a warrant. And they had to leave because they were outside the law. That's courage. You also saw they were trying to arrest a church in Canada or stop the service, and the people just started singing hymns to God, and the, peop the, the police were, were powerless to stop them. Again, they were being outside of their jurisdiction. Uh, another pastor in Canada was being told, you can't feed the poor. You're too close to them. He's like, I will feed the poor, and you can't stop me. And then a pastor in Canada again, it's all Canada, it seems here, but they were, he was being interviewed, and the interviewer said, why are none of your church behind you wearing masks? Why are they not wearing masks, he says? Because we're not dogs with muzzles. We're eagles and lions. The wicked flees when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. It's a defiant courage that's rising in the hearts of Christians today. And know this, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, self-control, a courageous heart in Christ, in and through Jesus Christ. So, how can we stir up then courage if we feel we need more of it today? If we're afraid in any way, can we scoop that out and replace it with a brave heart? Absolutely. God does it. And how do we do it especially? you got to assess the battlefield, watch this, with the eyes of faith and not with the eyes of the flesh. The flesh will always be afraid when they see, it sees danger coming and will cower and fear. But the eyes of faith sees something different on that battlefield. It sees God for me, on my side, to give me the victory. Again, think about this. When David looked at the battlefield, he said, Goliath is a chump. He is a, uh, an uncircumcised Philistine. And David saw God on his side to give him the victory and the win. Faith will always see it that way, because it's the truth. Look at what David says. Even before he fights, he says, For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hand. I'm going to win. There's danger, but I'm coming for you. Isn't that great? That is the cry, the battle cry of the Christians that God loves. Let it be in your hearts. I'm going to meet this danger, and I'm going to win. God has put that into the hearts of all his people. Think of this. Daniel, Daniel's friends, when they were to be thrown into the lions, uh, sorry, into the fiery furnace, they said to the king, defiantly, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. We're coming for the win. Isn't that great? If you look at Peter and John, the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, we will preach Jesus Christ, and no one can stop us. If you look at Paul, the Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. I'm coming for the win, for the victory, and God will give it to me. That's what courage sees on the battlefield. That's the assessment. And God loves that. Again, let me say it this way. Courage is faith in charge taking charge and charging. Let me say that again. Faith is in charge, taking charge, and charging, going forward for victory. And God loves that. He'll not let you down. Can you shout back at all the shouts of the Goliaths today and shout louder with a stone in your sling? Well, let's try that right now. How about for this virus? Fear, fear, fear. You all must fear. Fear it. Well, what's courage say? Courage says, Psalm 91, God will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover me with his feathers and under his wings I find good refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. And the Lord, Exodus 15, is my healer. I run forward for the wind. You're going to, to survive that and even if you did die let's say you did you still win you go to be with God in glory 
having kept faith to the end, but you didn't die in fear. Therefore, you always get the victory if you do that that way. Secondly, consider this one. How about this? Global identification marker that they want to give you. This immunity vaccine passport that the new world governments are uh, propagating now. You can't go on a cruise ship. You won't be able to go to a ball game or a concert or out of the country unless you get our mark. Sounds kind of like Revelation 13 to a degree. But will you come into allegiance with an evil agenda empire? Are you afraid of that? You say, as a courage speaking, no thanks. I already got a king. His name is Jesus Christ. And you got nothing that I need. And rather, you shall worship the Lord your God alone, and him only shall you serve. That's courage. We're going to need it. Courage to persevere when persecuted. Like in Canada. You know, they come in to break up a church, lock it up. What are you going to do? What if they, oh, took you away and threw you into jail? What does courage say to that? Good. I always wanted to have a jail ministry. In that case, I'm just part of the great hall of fame of God's greats through history who were all likewise arrested for the name of God because was not also Jeremiah arrested? How about Peter? He spent time in prison. And Paul in the dungeon of a cell. John the Baptist was thrown into the same. And even my king, the Lord Jesus Christ, was arrested. Ah, what an honor for me that I be counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. Thank you very much. That's courage in the face of danger. How about if they say, oh, but we're going to take away your goods. You won't have anything left. We're going to take it all away from you. We're going to make you suffer if you don't go along with us, if you don't throw on your lot with our villainous plot. Courage says, no problem, because there's nothing you got that I want. You can't take anything from me, because if I have the Lord, I have everything. And nobody can take me or him from me or me from him. And my treasure is where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. And my treasure is secure in heaven. And God will super reward me for it in the world to come. So courage again says, I win. And one more. How about death? Oh, they are preaching that one today. Death, 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 death. Death, 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 death. They could get you. But what does the courage in us say? I don't care. Because, frankly, my Lord's already conquered that one, too. Hebrews 2 says, Through death, Jesus destroyed already him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and he's delivered us who through the fear of death were subject to lifelong bondage. No, nope, you ain't got nothing on me. Because he lives... I shall live also. I go forward for the victory and the win. So you can see how courage is faith assessing the battlefield. Seeing with the Lord on my side, with the Lord on my side, I don't fear. With what can man do to me, the Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look on triumph on those who hate me. So courage, again, is faith on the war path. It's glorious. It's defiant. It's mighty. It's beautiful. It's, it's marvelous in God's eyes. It's the hallmark of the Christian. And we say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Can death stop me? No. Life? No. How about angels? No, they can't stop me. Principalities? No, not them either. Things present, things to come, powers, height, depth. How about anything else in all creation? No, nothing and no one can stop me because God's on my side and nothing can separate me from the love of God for me in Christ Jesus. So, thanks be to God who gives us courage for in Christ, God always leads us in triumph. And through Christ, God has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Courage. Amen.